to What's in the Box, Episodes of Horror with Donna and Eric. I'm Donna. And I'm Eric. And on this episode, we are discussing the novel and the movie of Psycho. Um, And it's funny because I always thought Psycho was written by Alfred Hitchcock. It's just, he's the one that had done the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, he had directed the movie. So um, I, I personally, I had never watched Psycho. I had never read Psycho. I think wasn't there like a remake? Yeah, Vince Vaughn. of the movie. Yeah, and uh, I want to say it was ninety eight or something like that. Yeah, and it was a scene for scene. Supposedly, I haven't actually seen it because there's no reason to watch a movie that's a scene yeah. for scene remake. Yeah, but I've heard, I've heard his performance is good, and I'm a fan of Vaughn, so I pro- maybe I'll go check it out now that I've rewatched this one. But yeah. Yeah, um, maybe I saw that one. I'm not sure, but I definitely know I did not ever see start to finish the Anthony Perkins. And I'm going to tell you right now, I keep thinking in my mind, Anthony Hopkins. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if I say Anthony Hopkins, <laughs> please correct me because I don't know why I keep thinking that. I know that's not him. It doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> Which did you prefer, the book or the the movie you know i I really like them equally yeah i really did i i mean yeah there are some differences that i preferred the book like the character of norman in the book was a little was different Mm -hmm. um look you know visually the way he was described in the book than the Anthony Perkins character and the way and the way he acts too and the way he acts yeah yes. um and he's also i want to say borderline alcoholic in the book yeah. and and in the movie you don't see him drinking at all yeah. alcohol anyways um so yeah yeah you needed the alcohol well the alcohol allowed the transformation or yeah disassociation disassociation to, to occur. yeah yeah and then uh and and in the uh in the movie it's just purely you know psychologically done so yeah so i'll share my screen because we got some good covers up here um now i didn't share i don't think i i I think i grabbed seven and i didn't grab either cover you or you or i had yeah so we can throw those up there too if you want to once, once we look at these guys yeah yeah, I think the, I mean, look, I think the one I have was printed in 2006. Probably mm-hmm. can't see it because of my, birch, my uh, background here. Uh, oh, that was kind of cool, though, for a second. Just her yeah. screaming. Yeah. But, yeah, you can't really see it. Yeah, so it's basically just her screaming, and it's a red cover, um, the shower scene there. So that's kind of cool. Um, uh, this one's kind of plain. I like it, though. Yeah, I like it too because it. I like how it's like cracked, mm-hmm. which totally fits with the character of Norman Bates. And this is a picture of a used copy, I think. So yeah. I don't think all the rest of the stress is on there, but it yeah. would look really cool if it was. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, it's so simple. Um, I like how it you know it just says it's a mystery, but you kind of get more than that just by looking at the title and the way they have yeah. it done. Um, yeah. This would grab my attention. Yeah. yeah for sure this one's kind of cool i like this one yeah didn't this feel like a 50s like a yeah kids, like a nancy drew or a party boys yeah mystery yeah. cover yeah i really liked it too i thought it was pretty cool and yeah, it kind of tells us stuff without telling us stuff yeah so i guess 1959 was the first publication of of this book and so this movie is like 1960 so it's like the yeah. book came out he heard about it and he immediately uh, commissioned in fact what he did was he bought the book in the airport he wanted them to get the studio to get it and i think they were kind of ignoring it and he got saw a copy of it in the airport read it on the plane when they landed he called back to his assistant and said hey you've got to get them to get the rights so we can make this movie yeah. so i think that's kind of a fun thing that it's like it wasn't something he was i i got the idea that he enjoyed the idea of it and he thought it was gonna be a cool thing but it wasn't like one of these kind of fell in his lap it wasn't really one of those that yeah you know, that was a passion project from a lo- for a long period of time yeah Hitchcock. Uh, this one, yeah 
yeah this one's kind of cool it's it's i think it's probably more of a more modern yeah um, i mean that's the iconic scene in the movie with the blood going down the drain mm-hmm. um so which doesn't necessarily it's not re- reflected in the book so if you hadn't really known anything about the movie you probably wouldn't get this besides the fact that she's killed in the shower um, which is why i think you had to this has to be a new version and because yeah. everybody pays homage to the movie now yeah it doesn't really matter about the book as much yeah. Um, yeah i remember watching the movie and i'll be like and i was like that doesn't seem like an awful lot of blood going down the drain though well what's funny is even though it was rated r they went out of their way to make sure that they didn't um follow the kills in the book and they didn't over gore and i think that yeah. was a hitchcock thing yeah. so we don't really see a lot of it's in your head um they didn't go crazy you know there's no nudity of course he he did everything he could to to downplay all that even though at the same time he's he's very uh you know every cut scene makes you feel like she she's getting stabbed and all that stuff but really he's just cutting away from it and the emotion yeah. of, the, of the stabbing so yeah i don't think i mean especially compared to today's standards this isn't going to be like a terror fire movie you're not going right, to see right right which you still haven't seen have you no, I have not. <laughs> That's my goal for this this Halloween season is to finally watch the the Terrifier movies. <laughs> Maybe when the Christmas one comes out, we can do a three part and go over all three of them. Yeah, but yeah, so cool. it's it's not. In fact, uh, and we can talk about it now or talk about it then. But uh, they use chocolate syrup because it's a black and white film. So yeah. chocolate syrup is what they use for blood because it it made the best contrast in the water. And yeah, what they wanted it to do. Yeah. So I, this was kind of a cool um, cover. The only thing is, it's a little confusing because that's Marion. Uh huh. But Marion never sees the mother in the rocking chair. It's Lila. Right. You know, so that's but kind of confusing. If you hadn't seen it, you would. Yeah. You wouldn't really know, and yeah. And I, it, this feels like this is the novel that came out immediately after the movie or right yeah. as the movie is coming out to yeah. try and, and uh, score some, you know, extra bucks. Yeah. And but, I don't know why it like, it says starring Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, John Gavin and Janet Lee. Why didn't they put Janet Lee first? I mean, she was like. <laughs> true. <laughs> you know, or I maybe they I wonder uh, if it has to do with the 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 you know staying power of the actors i mean mm. i mean perkins at the time though wasn't i don't think he was a household name i know he'd been in things yeah unfortunately for him i i mean he kind of begins and ends with psycho because before mm-hmm. he's done stuff but i don't know if he was a household name and then afterwards i don't think he was ever able to shake the the psycho, Shadow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moments, Norman so. Bates, yeah. I do remember movies he was in, but I don't remember ever really. I always think of him as as Norman Bates. So. Yeah, yeah, and even someone who has never actually watched the entire movie before, um, I always thought of him as Norman Bates. You know, this was this cool. Was cool. Yeah. yeah, this is really cool. Um, I mean, the eyes are crazy, but I mean, it feels like. Uh, you know what mid to to late 70s yeah trying to grab that slasher vibe yeah it just looks cool yeah yeah i really like that i don't think it's a cutout so when you open it it's not going to have anything but that would be a cool cutout if they would have done that yeah and this is a modern definitely a modern yeah um it's kind of a bummer that they don't have the the house yeah because the house itself like the motel is a big part of it but the house is a major character which we'll see that as we you know go through the characters yeah isn't it weird i wonder if this is based off of the tv mm. like if they took the uh, the graphics from the tv although the house should have been in the tv too yeah so i don't know why it wouldn't be although yeah, does that you know say... what? I haven't watched the TV show, so I don't know for sure, but it, it doesn't line up. Yeah. If 
because the whole point was is that she met a man who convinced her to build the motel. So if the TV show is about the motel and the and the man isn't in it, I don't know. So, but I don't have any desire to see the show. I no. wasn't interested in it at all. So, yeah, it's um, funny because I was watching, um, I was going through Amazon Prime and I saw that the show was on there, and I almost started watching it, but then I was like, eh, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's something about it that just doesn't. It just doesn't seem appealing. Yeah. I don't know if it's the cast. I don't know if it's just the idea of it. I mean, I think uh, I just it's one of those unnecessary things, although maybe somebody will come in the comments and tell us how brilliant it is. So, yeah. Is that the so that oh, yeah, that's really cool, too. That's yeah. I love that's the styles. I think that probably came out in the 80s. Yeah. And maybe early 90s because of the price. But. Those those are the ones I love. I love books like this. That's what made horror novels so great. Mm -hmm. Our covers like this, and the cover I've got is really cool too. Let's see if we can. Well, when we get, we'll get through that, I'll pull it up and then we can see. Yeah, because it does have a cutout thing. But yeah, no, I love that that cover. Yeah, this is a great one. I like this one and the the one in the shower with the night the eyes and the night. Mm -hmm. That's really cool because it kind of reminds us of that. Now this I thought was real simple, plain. But mm -hmm. it, it gets the point across. Yeah. And really, I mean, it's got, they're they're selling you on Alfred Hitchcock on this one. Yeah. So. Yeah, this almost looks like a, like it would be good for like a classroom, you know, mm -hmm. if I'll say college classroom or something. Um, uh, for, mimicking the blood coming down the drain yeah. probably a little bit there. Yeah. Um, and I think. And then there's this one again. I don't know how it got in there twice, but that's back to the beginning of the, the cover. So what cover was on yours? Well, it's got this. It's got a cutout. I don't know if you want to make the screen big so that it goes in the middle. Uh, yeah, let's, let's stop sharing. There you go. Uh, oh, so yeah. that's got that. And then and it opens up and you've got. Oh, wow. Track. That's cool. Yeah. And that I was like, man, this is this is a fun yeah paperback to have i don't know when this version came out but uh i guess i'll never know <laughs> must be on this page yeah here it goes fifth uh 82 so okay it must have been when warner brothers got the rights to it in the for the book that's yeah. the fun thing is that you know a book that's that iconic is going to go through a number of different hardcover and paperback printers yeah. especially when you go to europe europe and all that stuff so there's going to be a lot of uh, opportunities for them to get the covers right like we saw with dracula and frankenstein mm -hmm. and, and all the classics um so i think that's kind of cool too is to see all the different interpretations and and then get to jump through the timeline and kind of get an idea and a vibe of that you know decades book cover style because like the one we looked at that had all the the red that you said would be like a college edition that has the yeah. feel of rosemary's baby and mm -hmm. it had um the ones we all did exorcist all that right that period of time yeah. kind of had that same vibe so you kind yeah. of get that that feel with it um, yeah. and and you know it's funny i want to point out something too it has really nothing to do with the book but um I'm sure you're familiar with seeing stuff about, oh, indie authors and their, their editing and, or lack thereof, um, oh. you know. This copy I have was printed in 2006. This book was written in 1959. And in this copy, the sister Lila is referred to as Lisa. Oh, yeah. So yeah. even well-known books can have editing oh. problems. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, but yeah, I thought that was like Lisa, like how many people have like had their hands in this book since 1959, how many different right. versions, um, iterations, you know, and there's still something as glaring as a character being called the wrong name. Yeah, you no, know? that is weird. But it, like you said, it goes to show. Yep. So, I mean, mistakes will get through no matter what, doesn't matter yep. how many times we do something. Yep. They both sneak through. So. Absolutely. So even big people like this, like Robert Block, can have 
you know, editing errors in their books. Now we get into the movies here. Um, I don't know. I, those eyes. I want to see. Do I have this in are these backwards? Let me see. I think they might be backwards. Let's see. Let's so maybe they didn't come up and then maybe they didn't pop up in the order. So we can just go over them how it is. I had them uh, numbered or something thinking they might stay in that order. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. So I, this one. Yeah. I, it's really just creepy. an iconic. Yeah. And it really, that's a good way to end the movie. And then yeah. a second later, it flashes the skull of the mom. If you're watching the movie, yeah, it superimposes it, so you kind of get a, like a lightning strike shot. Yeah. So, um, so the the movie and the book basically follow the same storyline. The movie's got a few things that they changed up, but. The whole point of it is, is that the girl steals the money to get a better life. She's ready to get married. She's older. That's the funny thing about reading a book from the fifties. Yeah. Her, what, what, she's like 29 and she's like, it's over. I'm 27, 27. <laughs> so that's funny. Don't list, listen to her cry about that. But so in yeah. the in book, she's uh, uh, taking care of her mother. And so her life gets put on hold. And then she meets Sam on a cruise after the mother passes away. And he can't marry her right away because he's trying to work off debt that his father, you know, brought to his business. I guess he was, I think he was a gambler or something like that. Yeah. And so the whole point, and the movie does this too, is it tries to focus on her and their situation. And you're, you're thinking, oh, this is what the story is about. It's about this relationship and this lady and how is she going to get out of it? And then she doesn't meet Norman until she's on her way with stolen money to do the boyfriend. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then she stops at a hotel cause she's too tired. Yeah. And then of course the classic kill. And then the rest of the book is about the sister and the boyfriend trying to find out what happened. Like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was the second half of the movie. I was thinking to myself, um, obviously I saw the movie after I read the book. So I knew it was going to happen. But I was thinking to myself, how are they going to make this book last 200 plus pages of this girl being at this motel? Yeah. I, I didn't know that there was a secondary plot of the sister and the boyfriend trying to find Mary. Right. I think that's a smart way of doing it. And a lot of books nowadays, you'll run into that kind of stuff. So it's not clever as, as it was. But I'm wondering if in 1959 if it wasn't like mind-bending when it happened i know for a fact hitchcock thought it would be as a movie because in everything i've watched documentary and stuff you know he's before people would walk into movies whenever just however if you got there late you walked in didn't matter you could be there an hour late you would still just go into the theater and watch whatever and and then go home or whatever he made it so that the theaters would lock the door, close the doors, not let anybody in. They had a guard by the door. If you tried to come uh -huh. and get into the movie late, he wouldn't let you in. That was the deal that Hitchcock was pushing. Oh, and, wow. And the theaters <laughs> actually followed. And so it got to the point, and it's even in the advertising, it says, don't be late. You want to start this movie from the beginning or you won't be let in. And because he wanted them to come in and then fall in love or, or at least connect with her. Mm. And then be shocked by what happens and not yeah. come into a point where that you don't have that shocking moment and then see the rest of the movie. Yeah. Uh, what's the next one? Do we get a picture of her? Or is it going to slide to the mom? Yeah. No, it's Mary. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, we'll go and, back and to that, Norman. And how funny is that though? The only name they change is hers. It doesn't. I know. Sense. Yeah. What's wrong with Mary? Like, yeah, I, don't, I don't understand why he changed that. I don't know if it's, I wonder if he has too many Marys in his other movies. As much as I love Hitchcock, I'm not. There's only a couple of his movies that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody's name you'd think they'd change would be Lila. Because so I think yeah. that was more of a uncommon name mm -hmm. back then. So you why, think he would have changed. Why wasn't that Lisa? That would have yeah. been a good switch. Yeah. To Lisa. Well, yeah. Yeah. It didn't yeah. make much sense. But um, yeah. 
So the biggest uh, we talked earlier, the biggest changes between the movie Norman and the book Norman is, you know, obviously his the way he looks. He's, he's a big not, fat guy. He's a big fat guy who's not attractive and because he's not... he. Yeah, he's no, keep going. Uh, I was going to say he's um, not attractive. They make a big there's a big thing about him not liking to look in the mirrors. Mm hmm. Um, number one, because of his eyesight, because it, they kind of it's kind of inferred that he has bad vision because he keeps mentioning the mirrors are always blurry or wavy or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that could be part of his psychosis, though. Um, it wasn't really clear. Um, he's so yeah, he's just this big and kind of got the the hint that he was um, not he didn't like keep his hygiene up. Not that he was like a gross slob, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I kind no, of, I mean, socially awkward, socially and, awkward, yeah. And and he wasn't, yeah, like you said, he doesn't keep up with his appearance. He, he's not um, neat, I guess yeah. is how. But neat. yeah, yeah. The movie version, he's he is neat. Yep. He's very. I mean, he comes across as charming, mm -hmm. and um, if still awkward, still awkward. Awkward when pressed, but awkward when he puts himself in the situation. But for the yeah. most part, he he comes starts. I mean, as soon as he sees her, he's charming and and inviting and mm -hmm. warm in a way that I think disarms her in the movie. But in the book, you get the feeling she's more feeling sorry for him. Yeah, and uh, and then later, of course, she starts feeling sorry for him because his mother's screaming at him about her being there and stuff in the movie. So he comes back down to the motel to feed her instead of having her come to the house yeah i didn't like the opening sequence um in the movie the way they did it i thought there was too many um you know weird in the book she 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 gets the money she works for a, a real a realtor somebody pays cash for a house she wants to get the money to to start her new life with the guy and she leaves and they just don't know she's gone until Monday and they start yeah. putting it together in the movie immediately. The boss sees her in the car afterwards. The mm -hmm. cop catches her sleeping on the side of the road and then follows her, watches her change. Why change a car then? Why is she changing the car? With the cops across the street. It doesn't make any sense. None of that made any sense. Yeah. In, yeah. in the book, she's changing cars so that it's harder to figure out where she's at, who she is. And that made sense because every time yeah. she did it, she changed her name. Yeah. And so um, it just didn't make any sense in the movie. It was one thing I didn't like. I yeah. mean, it, it gave us insight, I guess, into some of the character, but, um, and I guess it added some minutes to the film. Yeah. So maybe that was what they were trying to do. But I just yeah. I thought it was kind of an odd way of doing it, you know, having yeah. the, the cop fighter on the side of the road asleep and. Yeah, and this was not suspicious at all when she turned away from the cop to get her license out of the, the wallet. Yeah, everything <laughs> she did was suspicious. I mean, the second yeah. he gives her the ID back, she slams on the gas and is gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, then, I think yeah, I think the character was pretty much the same in the book and the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And you could tell she's a she's desperate. Although there's the other thing I don't like about it. So in the in the in the book. Sam is darn near, you know, um, angelic with the way mm -hmm. he deals with her. Yeah. And in the in the movie, it starts off with them in a hotel room, just finishing having sex. He's uh, um, divorced, having to give all his money to his ex-wife. She wants to get married, but he says he can't until he takes that care of the ex-wife. I uh, wish I think that's what he was talking about. Yeah. You know? And then. And then so finally they get to a point where she's like, well, I don't want to be in the relationship if we're not going to get there. So then he's he relents in the book. He's he's trying to pay off the debt his father built up with the business, like I said earlier. And yeah. so he just doesn't want to marry her and be unable to provide for her. He doesn't want mm -hmm. her to suffer all the hardships he's going through. But he, he's you know, he's paying it off pretty quick. They're going to be yeah. married in a year, maybe two. And she just is tired of waiting. So she steals the money. I just feel like it's a more, I don't want to say realistic, but I don't know. She comes across as less of a dirt bag, I guess, in the, yeah. In the book, even though she yeah. still ends up doing, stealing money in both of them. 
but yeah but she gets her she she turns herself around though after her just talks yeah. with norman which is she's what like, happens in both yep yep she's like i'm uh, i gotta go back i don't think i can't remember in the book i don't think she was from phoenix i think it was fort worth yeah and that's the um, other thing that i thought was yeah. funny too that they changed the location i think probably because of the drive is faster you know going from arizona to california than yeah than making it texas too but but that's funny, both book and movie, even though the Norman is different, she sees enough of his errors and the way that he's got his life set up with the mother situation and how he's kind of stuck there. She realizes that what she's done is wrong and is going to go try and make it right. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought she was really good. Yeah. I mean, oh, she, yeah, she was I, I mean great... she's iconic anyway, so. Yeah. But I and thought she... she was really good. And then I thought it was also funny that... um at the beginning, she's wearing white when she's wearing her bra and she's getting dressed and stuff. She's in white. She steals the money. The next time you see her, she's in black. Just mm -hmm. a funny thing they did to let you know that her character is turned, yeah. you know, quote unquote yeah. evil, I guess. But Yeah, I love uh, the fashion back then mm -hmm. um, because she was wearing this nice outfit when she was working but then she went home and changed into this completely other nice outfit that was her not work outfit i guess yeah um, no so, yeah she looked very sharp they made yeah. sure that her uh clothes were were top of the line for her yeah. situation and stuff yeah the fashion was um just on point and even the sister so mm -hmm. well when we get to the sister let's see we got mother mm -hmm. which yes <laughs> which we see in silhouette in the windows and we see mm -hmm. her when she attacks at the uh the point and then we see her at the end yeah which is uh, a fun thing yeah and this is of course your iconic image of <laughs> yeah everybody knows that <laughs> yeah there we got the the yeah. other these are all the secondary characters after she disappears yeah yeah. And so and they fill up the second half of the book and the movie. And what's funny is that they are exactly how I pictured them. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't do anything crazy like he does change and marry to Marion or anything. He didn't. Yeah. It's like they didn't seem to need anything. The only thing is a little different is I kind of found the private investigator when I was reading the character. I, I kind of pictured him a little sleazier, yeah. you know, a little thinner. Yeah. Like he was almost skin and bones kind of thing. And uh and that bit. he was just a, uh, you know, just kind of a sleaze ball, you know, like the you used a traditional private investigator. But everybody yeah. else was pretty much spot on. And what's funny is, doesn't Sam change after the fact? So the yeah. very opening scene, he's kind of sleazy, you know, they're in the mm -hmm. hotel doing all that. But then when we're reintroduced to him, he's concerned. He's just like the book character. He's yeah. uh, hard to prove, you know, he's hard to convince that there's trouble. He in disbelief that Marianne would do anything wrong. Yeah. Um, I thought Lila was was perfect, perfectly cast. Yeah, um, I did have a little bit in my mind when I was reading the book. I I thought of Lila as more of a free spirit because she worked at a record store. She was down in yeah. I think it was Dallas buying a little music. younger. Yeah, a little younger. So I kind of had, even though this was the six, 1960, I kind of had more of like a a jeans kind of girl, you know? Um, not because she was dressed as smartly as Marion's yeah. character was. Um, but I also know she was, uh, you know, the, the record buyer. She was traveling. She did a lot of travel for work and stuff like that. So she probably would have been even if she wanted to be more free, she probably was still stuck in the vibe of that work. And, yeah. and, and we, we haven't got to the sixties yet in this story. So I don't think we're talking late sixties, free love, that kind of stuff. So mm, she probably yeah. is, she's probably dressing like she has to, to, you know, survive in that environment. But, but her energy was very kind of free yeah. and she was, and she wasn't listening to anybody. No. They could tell her anything and she would just go do what she wanted to do, which I thought was a was a good representation of, of the character too. Yeah. I really wish in the movie though they had put the um the scenes where her and Sam were talking about music. Yeah. Because yeah, the... it really looked into it. It gives you yeah. an, a better picture of the characters. So yeah, because in the book, you know, Sam was all into this music and um they kind of connected. 
Yeah. So you kind of think in your mind, oh, is Lila and Sam going to get together after yeah, like the a, fact? Yeah. Like a, a speed moment or a high stress thing. And they yeah. Get so trauma brings them together. <laughs> right. And I could easily see that because then you have that, that the way he's written in the book, you almost have him, he would feel like he needs to take care of Lila because, or because of, you know, he was going to marry the sister and then mm -hmm. it's because of him that the sister did what she did, that she's dead. And now Lila's alone. So now it feels like he, it's almost that old West thing, you know, where the yeah. brother dies, the other brother marries the widow, that kind of thing. It kind yeah. of feels like that uh, reversed. A yeah. Bit. In the book, yeah. it does. In the movie, they're just kind of there. So they're both yeah. looking into it. There might be a little bit of a spark, but not not anything that Hitchcock's trying to manufacture or show to the community. Yeah. And Arbogast, uh, the private investigator, in the book, he started off really hard. Yeah. But then he softened up when he realized, okay. And you kind of got a little bit of that in the movie. Um but you didn't get the in-depth conversations between Lila, Sam, and Arbogast as you did in the book. Um, and in the book, he's really tough with uh, Norman. Yeah. And they have it in the movie, but their their interaction is still friendly the whole time. Mm -hmm. He never seems to accuse Norman of anything. He just keeps going on with, oh, well, your memory, you forgot. He like totally acts like he's buying into it, even though... Yeah, he's not in the in the book he's very confrontational about it in fact yeah. he does it to the point to push norman and norman makes more mistakes because of it now the cool thing in the movie is that when he's doing it to norman in the movie um perkins is so good that he does this weird stutter thing that mm -hmm. seems so natural it did not look like he was acting at all and yeah. it was uh, it was amazing how he slipped it in there and it didn't miss a beat or anything just that weird you know half turn stutter that kind of changed his direction as he was going through it when he was trying to make up what was going on yeah uh, every time he kept getting caught in lies after lie yeah and um what i noticed when marion Mar got to the hotel of course it was raining she got off on, got out on the the right side of the car she slid through the <laughs> car yeah, and i, I was like it. okay I was like, that makes sense because it's raining pretty hard and she's getting out of the car closer to the building so she doesn't have to, you know, get wet. But they then did. when Ar Arbor Gas got yeah. to the hotel, he did the same thing. Yeah. So I was like, what the heck? So I, I Googled it. I'm like, why did Arbor Gas get out on the right side of the car? And it was two things came up that it could have possibly been. Number one is Probably the set ended right there. That's on what the I was left. thinking. The camera was in the way. Yeah. And um, also the second thing, or the third thing, actually, there are three different reasons why it could have been. I guess that was Alfred Hitchcock's preferred way to film people getting out of vehicles. Hmm. Because he didn't want to take the time to stop the shot. Yeah. To go around the car. To get the person coming around. Um, and then the third reason, which is kind of weird, is back in the 1960s, apparently that was a common way to exit your vehicle if you were alone, because most vehicles had bench seats in the front, right. and it was and a lot safer to exit on the sidewalk side instead of yeah. getting out in the traffic. Yeah, that makes total sense, too, if they, yeah. as long as the bench, because Don yeah. and I were talking about that, too, and she was like, because the bench seat. Yeah. Which we don't, I mean, when's the last time you were in a car with a bench seat? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, because it like really like perturbed me. I'm like, why are they getting it? Like, I understood Marion. It stands out. It, yeah. It but I'm like, okay. Out. So but I just all, did a, a quick Google search and I was like, that's very interesting. And all of them are very viable, you know, yeah. explanations. So that's cool. Too. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, I didn't realize that it was... Um, Obviously, they, you know, what I read said, you know, if somebody had a passenger in the front with them, obviously, it was usually a man driving with his wife, so he would get out and open the door for her. Um, but right. if somebody was driving alone, they would typically just slide across and get out on the passenger side, so they weren't getting out in traffic. So apparently, street parking was big back then, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. 
because um you know you watch some of the, all the old movies there there i mean in main streets and all the small towns they were always street parking yeah uh, so i really I paid wonder... attention when sam and lila pulled up to the hotel um but that was a broader shot and you could tell it looked like it was an actual parking lot and and sam did get out of the driver's side and then go around to the the passenger side I was like, what are they going to do? How is this going to work out? Yeah. And then he was also pressed because they were, they were confronting Norman for like the third or fourth time. So, yeah. There would be a little more um, urgency to what they were doing. Yeah. And then we have the big reveal. I loved her, her reaction. Yeah. She's, she did amazing. The look on his face when he comes through with that knife and is doing mm -hmm. the mom's voice, it's hilarious. And yeah. Anna, you could and scream worthy because I mean, mm -hmm. he looks batshit crazy. Yes, yes, he, he goes does. through that door, and you're just like, okay. And if this was filmed in the 70s, or the I mean, like we said, there was a remake, I just don't know how graphic it got, but this would have been pretty graphic scene if that guy hasn't, if he doesn't, Sam doesn't show up and save, yeah. And I thought that was a cool thing, too, because in the book, she's supposed to go to the sheriff and he's going to distract Norman. And then she just goes to the house because she's so hard headed and has to do what she wants to do that. She goes in there and nobody knows that she's yeah. there. But Norman knows. So he continues to talk to distract Sam in the um, in the movie. She just runs to the house. He knows she's going to the house. Yeah. So the second she gets to the house, Norman discovers it then he freaks out. But in the book, there's this really weird back and forth between the two of them where you, he, Sam thinks he's distracting Norman and Norman is basically a cat playing with the mouse mm -hmm. until he can hit him over the head with the bottle and then take off. And that's when you start seeing the more sinister um, put together. I want to say uh, the clever Norman. Is yeah. When he starts doing all that because he, He's already shifting back into mom mode. Yeah. So I got, I wonder who do you think you could classify as the leading lady? Yeah, because, I don't know. I guess, I mean, they pushed it as, as Janet Lee. So, yeah. I mean, they both had really big, important parts. Yeah. I assume she's considered the leading lady. Yeah. I mean, I guess you technically could say Norman's mother was because even though oh, we don't yeah. know, you know, she's played by different people as she's the shadow and but she talks through the whole thing. And, you know, at the end of the movie, they they explain everything, which Albert Hitchcock didn't want to do. He thought it was silly. He thought people would get up and leave. Which I was like, do, pe do people not watch? You know, I was like, the more you listen to it, you're more you're like, people just pop in and out of movies, I guess. And just yeah. didn't even, like, they didn't care how it started or how it ended. They watched a couple of I mean, it was only a nickel so, back then. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean about, you know, you only got five minutes left, you can get up and leave. I, and then now we sit to the end, just in case there's a three second little blurb thing on a Marvel movie, we'll sit there to the very end. Yeah. These people were leaving before the movie was even over, which blows my mind. But, yeah, um, but yeah, no. So you have all these different people. So I guess you could have technically say the mother, but I think it's got to be Janet because I mean that's how he wanted it too. He wanted you to, like I said, focus on her and think, oh, this is it. And then to have her die in the middle of the movie was just unheard of. Yeah, and the mother was, you know, for a movie from 1960, the mother reveal, not Norman as the mother, but the like. The yeah. taxidermied mother. Mm -hmm. Um that was pretty that would have been pretty terrifying, you know. Yeah, no, and they did a pretty good job with what yeah. they had there. I mean, I assume that's probably what it looks like. Mm. He he dig he dug her up and he treated her so that she wouldn't decompose too badly, but there's gonna be some and yeah. Filled her with yeah. sand, I guess. Sawdust, sand, yeah, something like that. And that's another difference, too. In the book, she was dead for 20 years. So yeah. I guess that would just make, I forget how, if they mentioned exactly how old Norman was when he died. I think you want to say eight. I think I don't he was know. eight when his dad died. Oh, maybe. Because he 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 went away for a couple of years after the death in both the movie and, and the 
the book, even though I don't think they mention it in the movie, but he gets really perturbed when she starts talking about putting the mother in an institution. He yeah. starts talking about how terrible institutions are. If you read yeah. the book, he was put in an institution after the par- after the mother died because they, you know, because he was unbalanced because of it. They didn't know that he had killed her. Yeah. We don't find yeah. that out until later, but um, so I want to say in the movie, he's like 20. Yeah. Four, yeah, 24, 26, something like that. Yeah, because they said in the movie she had been dead for 10 years, but in the book she was dead for 20 years. So maybe he's 30. Yeah. You know, and then in the book, though, I got the feeling he was like 48. Yeah. And that's and and that's why I thought it was more. I don't know. Sad's not the right word, but the uh, Mary was uh, not upset upset when they're talking. Mary's like. like she feels for him because she she's on that path of where she feels like her life's being wasted. And mm-hmm. in front of her is an example of a person who has lost his entire existence to his mother. Yeah. Who he who she believes he's still taking care of, but that, you know, he's been attached to this lady, you know, for 40 plus years. And so she that I think that's in the book why she's like, I gotta go take the money back. I can't do this. We gotta fix what I yeah. did. Um, because yep. she doesn't want to end up like Norman bitter right. and upset and all that stuff so and the tad yeah. off his rocker yeah so of course the iconic house and the sign um i, yeah, I, I think, thought it was really cool the way they did it so yeah yeah i think the house is almost its own character yeah it definitely is especially when they describe it in the book where yeah. it, it feels like it's untouched and like you said he you know his mother died 20 years ago and it's still so that would have been in the 30s or maybe, you know, just getting into the 40s. So it still has all this stuff that you would find in a house at that period mm-hmm. of time. The only difference is, is his books. He's yeah. got all those books. And then you find out later that some of the books he's got up there are pornographic and um, I guess maybe violent in a way. But yeah. I was wondering what they were going to do when she found the book in the house and the movie. Because I was like, there's no way they're going to show anything. We already know that they're not showing us anything. Everything's left up to your imagination. But she opens the book, she makes a face, and then they cut to something else. So we never know. But those are supposedly filled with pornographic material. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in California, I believe. I love how there's just conveniently a swamp behind the house. Yeah. Well, are there many swamps in California? (laughs) Maybe in um, the lower areas. I don't know. I don't know, really. I mean, there might be a spot where two where where they have an abundance of water or something but yeah you're right i thought it was kind of weird too which makes me wonder because i kind of thought it was set in california in the in the book yeah i'm like maybe they don't tell us where it is i mean we know they they actually don't so maybe it's it's more you know oklahoma or higher you know Uh, so maybe there uh, are bogs there i don't know yeah um i love the scene where he was watching the mary's car sink Mm -hmm. um because i remember in the book um he was describing saying oh i thought it would be fast but it took basically saying oh it took forever and i didn't think it was going to ever sink and and then there was like a pop and then it you know it sunk so it was nice to see that they kind of mimicked that because did you notice there was like a part where it kind of stalled yeah it stops for a minute and then you see his face his face He's she like, tells you oh. everything. And yeah. He's like, so, and then, uh, and then it pops and goes down, like you said. So, yeah, no, I, I thought, I mean, I, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie, but I've seen the movie and I've, I've always enjoyed the movie. I'm like, this, this, watching it now, I, I'm moving the movie up. I mean, he is just amazing in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can't have the movie without the house. I love, love the house. Yeah. Um, and you're right. It should be on the cover of that book. Yeah. And the cover of the book looks like this from when it was raining when she shows up. Yeah. What book we were looking at, you know, so it does. Pay, and so you can't see the house, I guess, because it's so dark. But Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's uh, without the house, you don't you need to have the ability for the mom to look down right? mm-hmm. and for him to look down. And yeah. that in the hotel itself. And, and that's just a even though the murder took place in the hotel, the most sinister part of that whole property is the house. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely yeah. got all the ghosts. Yep. 
Yeah. So I think, yep, that's our last image. So yeah, I mean, they both hold up. They're both equally good in their own rights. Uh, and they were, the movie followed the book pretty well. Yeah, the things the that the guy changed, you know, none of it was like complete nonsense. You know, sometimes we'll watch a movie and be like, I don't understand why they changed anything, you know, mm -hmm. or it really doesn't. I mean, everything kind of made sense. I didn't like some of the choices initially, like I said, with the, but I kind of understand they were doing it in a way to allow her because if they don't have the cop stopping her, if they don't have the confrontation at the used car place, then you don't have the the moments when she's driving and thinking about what everybody must mm -hmm. be thinking. And then it shows you her state of mind as she travels to the Bates Motel. And then it allows us to understand why she changes her mind when she gets mm -hmm. there because she's played out all the other stories in her head which yeah. we wouldn't have been able to do because she wouldn't have had any confrontations. So that way, I guess I do understand why they did it. It just felt weird that, you know, why would you change your car if the cop is watching you change the car? It doesn't. Yeah. Matter. Yeah. I was it defeats the purpose. Yeah. So she pulled in and the cop wasn't there, but then the cop drove by and realized it was her and like turned around and like, and I'm like, I mean, okay. Parks she... gets out and leans against his car and watches her. I mean, like yeah. plain as day, she knows he's there. Yeah. So he's not even trying to be covert. Yeah, she's like, and she knows he's there, so she's just like, I'm just going to do it anyways. You know, she couldn't have played it off like, oh, I think there's something wrong with my car. That's why I stopped, you know? Yeah. She could have almost the left her luggage and all the other stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, when Norman was cleaning out the hotel room in the movie, I was like, and he just picks up the newspaper and just throws it into the back of the car of like, there's your money. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is that they could have just as easily had her put it in the glove box just like they did. And then and then it's not even a question. Yeah. Because there's no way you're going to pick up a newspaper with $40,000 in it and not go, why does this newspaper feel so heavy? And yeah. Look. There's just, I mean, I guess you could say, well, he was frantic. His mother just murdered her. He's got to clean up the body and stuff. But I'm like, nah, you, you'd pick it up and yeah. you'd immediately be like, there's something in here. Yeah. Just to check it, just because you're curious. Yeah. Or when he flung it, the weight of the money would just like open up and it would fall out. You would you think, know? yeah. So yeah. that, 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 I mean, we're nitpicking, but yeah. Um, but th that's it. I mean, the movie itself is still very entertaining and the characters, you're believable for the most part. Yeah. And, and even though it has that 60s feel or even 50s feel to it, um, you know, there's almost no cussing if there's any. Yeah, I don't recall any. I mean, everything about it feels like, you yeah. know, you could easily put that on television today without any editing and you'd be fine. Uh, yeah. But it still holds up. It still has everything that you would want out of a good um, scary movie. Yeah. And so even a, just a mystery, too. In a way, it's kind of a mystery as you're trying to put it all together. Now, it wouldn't have been hard to solve if you didn't have the mother dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was just Norman killing people and stuff, but I mean, they make movies like that all the time now. So, um, yeah. but yeah, that, that added twist really does sell the mystery side of it too. Yeah. I missed in the movie, um, which they probably couldn't put in the movie effectively was Norman's disgust with having to clean up the bodies. Like he was yeah. super distraught when he was like, I mean, yeah. he was distraught with Mary, but then when he had to clean up Arbor Gas, I, I mean, I could just imagine this guy like gagging and like hyperventilating, yeah. you know? Because <laughs> in his mind, he's cleaning up the mess to save his mother, so his mother, they take yeah. her away, and uh, and they, so that she doesn't get punished for what she's done. He's helping protect her, yeah. And so he's forcing himself to do it. In the movie, he just cleans up after her, but. At no point are we led to believe that he's worried about his mother. Uh, even when they did the confrontation scene in the book, it's more drawn out. He confronts her, says, you have to go in the basement. They're yeah. looking, you know, in the movie, they have the conversation back and forth. But there's no real concern from him in the movie, I don't feel like. Yeah, it's for like, protecting the mom. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like he just doesn't want them to find her because he does know what he's done. Where in the book... I don't know if we 
if we're to believe that he understands that they're two, that they're they're the same person, they're not. Yeah, we don't like find that out towards the when the mother, when they meet up with the sheriff, because yeah. he's the one that says she's been dead for twenty years. You Which know? they do in both, yeah. And so I thought yeah. that, and that's the problem with reading the book right before the movie, right? Is that we already know the big the big reveal, but yeah. then you also can see why Hitchcock was so hell bent on making sure people didn't come in at the wrong time. Because then, yeah. then it wouldn't have made no any sense, and then you would have people just scratching their head. But yeah. it really builds up, and it's a really good twist. But I got to tell you, Perkins and they had it. I I don't think if they would have had somebody that was just like the book, I don't think it would have been as powerful mm. as it is in the movie. Because Perkins is just so darn charming when yeah. he's normal. They press him, then he starts to stutter and get flustered. But um. And he looked very nervous, like his whole character, like he was charming, but you could still see that edge of like awkwardness, yeah. awkwardness. Yeah. 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 And it also, I think it plays into it more. Now you could say he was heavy and overweight because of the drinking in the book. Maybe that's part of it and overeating and stuff, the ways he was dealing with all the problems that psychologically he had. But I just thought it felt more natural for him to be almost maybe not skin and bones, but. You know, he's very slight in this movie, although mm-hmm. he's got the biggest shoulders. It's like he was wearing shoulder pads yeah. and every time he had a coat or anything on. But but yeah, he has just the long arms and the slender frame. And it just and I think it added to that face when he's looking down at the end and then he looks up and we saw that picture to start with. It's he looks insane. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we catch that as much. I'll tell you, somebody who might play a good one if they did that they redid it and they follow the book a little more familiar. Do you ever see that movie identity with um, oh, what's his name? Uh, John Cusack. And yes. A, and they go to the hotel and spoiler alert, everybody five seconds cut off. If you haven't seen identity, they're all the personalities, but they're all the personalities of that one guy. That's kind of fat. And he's got the weird eye and stuff. That guy would make a good Norman Bates too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, it's Vaughn. You know, I, I mean, a lot of people now just think of Vince Vaughn as comedy Vince Vaughn, but for the first like five years or so, he did a lot of dramas. And so that's how I always think of him. Cause I, I used to love watching indie movies back in the day when it was really hard, when you couldn't just stream stuff, when you had to go like mm-hmm. find them in theaters or find the video and stuff. Um, he did a lot of movies that were very interesting. And, and I could see that Vince Vaughn as Norman. But like I said, we can go see it. I just don't have any desire to see it when we have such a perfect movie already. Right. I don't, yeah. I don't feel the need to. Yeah, definitely not. Um, I enjoyed them. I enjoyed the movie. I'm not a huge fan of black and white. I really am not. Um, but I turned it on and I was just captivated. Yeah. And I just had to keep watching. And it was. And it's funny because I was trying in my head, trying to think like, well, is this still a time when most movies were black and white? And it will, I don't think it was. And then I watched the documentary and it turned out that they didn't have a big budget. And so he said, we're going to film this in black and white and that'll save some money, but also we'll be able to do some of the things I want to do because we'll, we'll black color would make it worse. Cause I don't know if the blood scene works um, for him, if it's in color, cause then yeah. it's real graphic. Yeah. I think that's part of the reason they did black and white. Cause I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say he's, squeamish because you see birds and a couple other movies and he has blood in it you know there are some stuff in it but he did not seem to want to lean into the violence of the book with psycho the movie and that's that's another we didn't even talk about that in the book no uh the when they kill mary they cut her head off because mm-hmm. it's yeah. so so dramatic and violent yeah. and then and then the movie we just get the the stabbing over and over again yeah, um, and they yeah. she did pretty good on Arbor Gas too, but in the movie, all we had was like one little thing of blood, and he fell down the stairs. Yeah, and that really was what you could tell. That's what Hitchcock wanted was that weird fall down the stairs where you follow with the character as he's falling down. Mm-hmm. Um, he likes the you know the um, cinematography of it more than he was thinking of. I think the violence of it, like we do nowadays with movies, where it seems like more often than not, when we watch a scary movie, they're trying to one up how violent they can make it and see if they can't make you um, squirm or, you know, whatever. But he's thinking more of how the shot should look and how, how pretty it'll be on, you know, when he's filming it. 
it feels yeah. like you know yeah yeah um so i think i need to watch some more uh alfred hitchcock movies i've never seen the birds oh, never well, seen birds so <laughs> you know what then we need to see the birds because the birds is one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid i haven't watched it probably in 10 years though so. Yeah, and I think it's based on a short story because I actually tried to find, I was like, oh, it's got to be a book, um, but it's based on a short story that's in one of his collections. So Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we should do that. I, I'm a big fan of that movie. Or, you know, we could, I mean, then after that, most of his movies are more psychological stuff mm. you know? and, and even some straight up just crime things, you know. Yeah. But, but you could see why he's the master of suspense. I mean. We could pull out, I could probably 10, 15 movies, and they're all blueprints for what people in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you know, all these cutting edge movies are basically just stealing stuff from Alfred Hitchcock. He's already done it. So, yeah. Yeah. What was there a show that he had? Because I remember in Alfred Hitchcock Presents, it was like drawing his outline, Mm -hmm. and then he would step into it, and every episode would be a mystery. And then he had paperback books that were all the short story paper uh, of the different mysteries and stuff. It wasn't scary. They, it wasn't Twilight Zoney. It wasn't anything like that. It was always a person did something to a person kind of thoughts. You know, yeah. I don't remember there ever being any supernatural ones, although I'm sure there there might have been and somebody will come up. But I, I used to watch that as like an eight year old because they would run it on late night television before they turned off TV, which I'm sure – Maybe half our audience doesn't even understand what I'm saying right now. Yeah. They used to turn television (laughs) off. You get the midnight, you get the national anthem and the flag, Um, and then they would go into just making noise, you know, the emergency. Yeah, my brother and I used to watch the Elvira um, creep show or Elvira movies that we'd fall asleep and we'd wake up with the pee. Yeah, and then you're like, okay. (laughs) And then, or that, I mean, it was like a, a subtle way for society to tell you to go to bed. Yeah, it's time to go to sleep. You don't need yep. to be up anymore. It's not like <laughs> it is now, where you just keep going at it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I remember. I remember getting to watch some of those, and you get the Twilight Zones, and and um, oh, what was the other one that was really popular? I'm trying to think. There was another one that was on that was really cool. But you know those those shows were all fun, and and I know some of the things that I enjoy now, and that I enjoyed in my teens and twenties was based off of things that Hitchcock did on those TV shows and in his movies and stuff. Yeah. So I think, uh, I mean, for sure, this is a classic movie slash book. And then we give the credit to Robert, but these are two things. These are foundation pieces to why we are fans of horror because people fed off of this stuff and brought us. I mean, the story yeah. of psycho is repeated in texas chainsaw massacre it's all based off the same guy and then you mm-hmm. could also say that silence of the lambs is too because buffalo bills based off the same guy ed gein so i mean yeah you kind of get that layers of it and that's what i think is so cool about horror is that even though we got three totally different franchises they all kind of come from the same place nice, and yeah. we connect to it and it um lets us connect to other people who've connected to it. Cause we all kind of know the story, even if we haven't seen all the different pieces or even yeah. if we haven't looked into Ed Gein himself. Um, and that's a fascinating story too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting how I know the story of psycho, but I had never seen the movie or read the book. Yeah. It's funny. You my know? wife was the same way. Cause Don actually said, Oh, I've seen this. And then we sat down and she's like, Oh, I don't think I've seen this one. Yeah, she saw like the Vince Vaughn pieces of it. Yeah, and she's seen pieces of it. She knew the showers, of course. She's seen the shower scene because that's been reenacted in so many different things. But yep. it's also been on like greatest hit shows and things like that. So you know, I say she never watches horror and stuff. So that does tell you something. I mean, it's light enough that she watched it and enjoyed it and didn't. You know, it wasn't terrifying to the point that Hitchcock didn't push the violence and the gore and the unnecessary stuff, but he yeah. did make it creepy and scary and had some pretty cool stuff in there. Yeah. Um, very, very atmospheric. And um, yeah, but the book, man, I mean, you know, it was a good book that I got it done so quickly. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I still took longer than you did, but I still got it done in, in record time. Cause I was actually looking forward to reading it again. And as I was reading it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is really cool. I love how he I'm I'm a fan of his and I haven't read enough of his books. I want to read more Robert Block. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was actually, I looked on Goodreads and I pulled up his name just to see what else was out there. Um, so I'll definitely be adding more of his stuff to my, my I've read Psycho 1 and 2, and then I had another book. And I was in a, in a I mean, I was in a super dry spell before we started doing the show. And, uh, and I, and I had a book that I found just dumb luck somewhere like half price books or something. And I started reading it and it was fascinating. And I got like 40 pages into it and Kittle ate it. And so oh, no. and she <laughs> ate the ending. So it wasn't like she just ate some of the beginning and I could finish it. She destroyed it. And this was, this was puppy Kittle. So she, she, yeah. she kind of pulls back a little bit. Now she doesn't destroy everything, but that was actually the last that little chunk of time, I think I lost like six or seven books during that period of time, but that was the only one that really like frustrated me. Cause then I went to go look for it and it's out of print and it was hard to find. Uh, and yeah. then I'm like, well, do I want to spend a ton of money trying to order online? And part of the fun of these old books for me is finding them in, in nature. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if you find, maybe somebody's selling them like, you know, Mike, Mike Davis was doing it, Texas author con, um, where we got the, you know, he's got all the old books and you're like, oh, I haven't seen this in forever. I want to grab it. I like that kind of stuff. It's it's not as fun to just go to eBay, find it, buy it for whatever. And Yeah. But I'm still looking for that one because, and I can't even remember what it's called now. So I'm going to have to look it up and do all that. <laughs> that would be a fun one. But I was like, man, that was a disheartening loss. Yeah. I can't wait to go to, uh, I can't wait to check out what Robert Essig is going to have. I know. And then I noticed <laughs> I'm next to him. I'm next oh, to that no. table. Like I'm not going to be paying attention to anything, but what he's got on that table. Cause I want to dig around. Cause he's always got cool stuff. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited to see how um, TBR goes in Tennessee. So yeah. yeah, it will be good. But yeah. I'll be spending all my money at his table with the, <laughs> the vintage books. Yeah. And that's, that's fun too, though. I'm excited. I already paid for one. He He posted something online ages ago. And I said, hey, I want to buy that and I'll pick it up at TBR. So I've already done that. So I know I got one for sure. <laughs> nice. Okay, it is time for the Not Stephen King Book of the Week. And this week we have um, oops, Alternate Tunings by Brian Cutler. Um, I'm going to say I am not a fan of this cover. Yeah, it's a pipe organ, right? Yeah, an okay. organ. And there and is... It, but there's eyes, too, so I guess yeah. it's possessed. Yeah. Um, no. So, oh. and I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually going to reach out to the author on Instagram because he actually sent me this copy um, for a review. I'm about halfway done with it. Um, and I'm going to tell him, I love the book, but you need a new cover. Anyways, um, it's a werewolf book. But oh, okay. about the, but about the psychological, like lycanthropy. Spoiler alert. Um, well, I'm gonna say now that you say it, the cover makes a little more sense. Yeah, because I can eyes. see the, the eyes and the yeah. teeth and the and then somehow it ties into this organ thing. Yeah. So there is an organ um, that is in the story. Um, basically, what it's about is this guy. He works for. Um, uh, psychic research institute in london and he hears about these murders that happened at this remote village in switzerland and he actually goes to this village and it's full of young men and women who are world war one orphans the entire village is um orphans from the first world war and this takes place like in 1938 so like shortly before world war ii um and then there's this guy the deacon who seems to be like leading it. It's kind of like culty. Um, and I don't want to spoil too much, but it's like the more answers you get in this book, the more questions you have. And it's just fascinating. Like the road that this story is going down. Uh, like I said, I'm only about halfway done um, with it, but it is so good. And it's like quicksand. You're kind of like just drowning in the story it just kind of like takes you over and it's just it's not super gruesome um there's not a lot of like gore or violence or anything like that in it um but it's very creepy very atmospheric um uh, and it's funny because i was going through my um um amazon wish list for books and this was actually on it oh, that's like cool. 
way like in the middle i probably have like 300 books on that list but oh, I'm sure. um and i'm like oh that's on there well i better delete it because i already have a copy um and it turns out that the author i forget where he lives but um when i gave him my address for him to send me the book to uh i found out he actually lived one town over for like eight years oh wow yeah he's like oh since you live in lowell um i'll send you some stickers too you know because i lived in he lived in tuxbury um so yeah, just another author I kind of just connected with on on Instagram, and uh, yeah, so it it's definitely not a fast paced book. You definitely have to like take your time and and like absorb it, um, but it is fascinating. It is a really fascinating book. So definitely check it out. Alternate Tunings um, by by Brian Cutler. Cool. Yeah. All right, and we will see you on the next episode of what's in the box. Take it easy.